Hello friends, this video on biotechnology principles part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now before we talk about the recombinant DNA, we have to talk about the vehicle DNA, the DNA which will actually help to carry this uh, uh, foreign piece of DNA or the selected piece of DNA such that it can be introduced into the host organism because vector DNA plays the most important role in the process of formation of recombinant DNA. So what are vectors? These are the vehicle DNA molecule that carries foreign DNA into the host cell. So the vectors are as we know these are the vehicle DNA that carries the foreign DNA into the host cell. So I have already discussed before the significance of vectors. Why do we have vectors? Why do we need somebody to carry the foreign DNA? That's because if we try to directly insert the piece of foreign DNA into the host cell, the foreign DNA will not be able to replicate itself. And if it is not able to replicate itself, then there is no point introducing it to a new organism because it will not be passed on to their progeny. So that is the purpose of having a vehicle DNA molecule which is called as vector. Now, vectors are the plasmid DNA molecules which are self applicating so that they can produce multiple copies of itself and foreign DNA. So, it is very important that the foreign DNA is linked to the vector in such a way that the foreign that whenever the vector replicates that is whenever the plasmid dna replicates the foreign dna also replicates itself so the vector should have following features so that the foreign dna when linked to it should be able to replicate itself so let us take an example let us talk about the same old jellyfish you remember the jellyfish and what was the gene which gene were we interested in the jellyfish so in the jellyfish our gene of interest or the desired gene for us was the gene which was responsible for the glow of the jellyfish at night right so we were interested in that particular gene so that was our gene of interest now if we wanted a frog also to grow like a jellyfish so frog is our what it is the target organism now we want the frog also to glow at night just like the jellyfish. So in that case what will we have to do? We will have to extract the gene of interest from the jellyfish and put it inside the cell of the frog. But we need to make sure that once this gene enters inside the cell of the frog, it should be able to replicate itself so that when this frog reproduces, the next generations also get that gene. So that is possible only when there is a vector DNA. So when you have have a plasmid DNA so some part of the plasmid DNA will contain the piece of foreign DNA which has the gene of interest now when this enters inside the cell of the frog this is self replicating so it can replicate and produce multiple copies not only of itself but also of the foreign DNA so that is how vectors come into picture that is why we need vectors now let us talk about some of the examples of cloning vectors so one very common example is the plasmid. Now this is what we have often been referring to. So many a time while talking about the cloning vector or while talking about the vector, I am using the term plasmid DNA. That's because plasmid is a very common cloning vector. So what is plasmid? It is a circular DNA that replicates autonomously inside bacterial cell. So if you look at the bacterial cell, you have a bacterial DNA which is nothing but the chromosomal DNA. Other than that, you have circular DNAs like this which are independent of the bacterial DNA. That is, these plasmids can independently replicate themselves and they are not dependent on the chromosome in any way. And this is one feature why plasmid DNA acts as the vector. Next example would be the bacteriophages. Bacteriophages, even though the name say bacteriophage, they are not bacteria, they are viruses that multiply inside bacterial cells. So these viruses, this is how they look like and these viruses, they enter inside the bacteria and then they replicate themselves there. So while replicating, they are considered as a part of the bacteria. However, the bacteria is a host cell for these viruses. So they can also act as cloning vectors. And they give really high copy numbers. Now, what are copy numbers? So when we say copy numbers, it means 
whenever we talk about replication replication is all about creating exact copies so how many copies are being created that is copy number so let us suppose you have an original copy of notes and you want to get it photocopied now you have different options you can either just get one copy or one photocopy of the note so your copy number is just one but if you want to make 10 copies of the same notes, your copy number increases. So depending upon how many copies are being created, the copy number is assigned. So bacteriophages normally have very high copy numbers because they create multiple copies of themselves. Third example of cloning vectors are cosmids. And what are cosmids? They have certain features of plasmids and certain features of the bacteriophages. That is why they are cosmids. So they are also circular DNA, but they have features of both plasmid as well as phages. So they are called cosmids. So these are some of the examples of cloning vectors. Why are they called cloning vectors? Because these vectors help the gene of interest to clone, that is to produce multiple copies of itself. So that is why these vectors are called cloning vectors. Now let us try to understand how the cloning exactly happens into a vector. How exactly the foreign gene clones into a vector. How, what facilitates the cloning into a vector. So this is the vector. This is the cloning vector rather. And this is the piece of desired DNA which has the gene of interest. So what do we want to do? We want both of them to combine to form the recombinant DNA. Now the question is, is there any terms and conditions or is there any such uh, in conditions which need to be present for this combination to take place? So that is what we are going to discuss in this section. Now there are a few things which play a very important role as far as cloning into a vector is considered. So the first thing is origin of replication, next is selectable markers, third is unique restriction sites. So what are these? These are basically the features which should be present in a vector. So the vector should have all these features so that the foreign DNA when gets linked to the vector should be able to replicate itself. Now if these features are not present in a vector then cloning into that vector will not be possible. Now we will discuss about each of these features of the uh, vector in detail. So now only when this is possible, only when cloning into a vector becomes possible, only then we can think of uh, having the recombinant DNA introduced into the body of the target organism and that is, that is, it is only then when we can imagine that even the frog can glow at night just like the jellyfish. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.